So could you briefly <laughs> introduce what services uh, Inside the Tracker offers? Because uh, not everyone, it's, there may be some people who haven't heard of you. Yeah, of course. So what uh, the services that we provide are uh, services that allow you to find what's happening in your body. And then based on that, receive recommendation with a simple and natural intervention, basically food, supplement, exercise, and lifestyle changes. Those recommendations are coming based on a survey data that you fill in and data from a, a blood biomarkers, DNA markers, and a data from fitness tracker. So because not everyone have all of that data, we can help you to either uh, get tested. So if you are in the US or Canada, you can go to Quest Diagnostic, which is the best, uh, the biggest lab in the US. And you can go there, uh, go to get tested and we'll receive the result and analyze it. If you don't want to go to the lab because uh, uh, you are too busy or you are scared of uh, COVID or something like that, we can send a phlebotomist to your home. Phlebotomist is a technician that can come and take the blood. If you don't want to do that, we can send you a home kit that you can prick your finger, a drop a few drops of blood on a piece of paper, send to our partner and they will analyze it. And if you already have the data, you can actually uh, upload your data into our uh, a server. And uh, we have a service that called OCR that extract the data from uh, the piece of paper or from uh, the picture that you upload. And then we, we can uh, basically use that as a starting material to give you the recommendation. For the DNA, if you have a DNA result from 23andMe or Ancestry, you can uh, upload it to our server. If you don't have it, we develop a, a specific microarray that you can get tested and buy from us. And from Fitness Tracker, today we are uh, integrated with Fitbit, um, Garmin, and Apple Watch. So if you have any of them, you can connect them, and then you will receive a better recommendations. So how often should you get tested? Because it seems to me that what you'd be looking for is a recommendation, then you make a change, and then you want to have another test. And So do you offer guidance on how often people should test? And how often do they yeah, normally sure. test? Yeah, yeah. So, so um, I see it uh, like that. DNA is a once in a lifetime because your DNA is not changing other than if you have a, a cancer. So the DNA is very stable. So you need to do it once in a lifetime. The blood is a, a, in the same analogy is like a mountain. So but why it's a mountain? It's giving you a lot of value. Uh, blood is a liquid gold. That's blood is what uh, actually the physician are using. So the quality, the grade of the blood, the, the amount of uh, peer reviewed scientific publication is amazing. So we can give you a very good recommendation by that. But today it's not uh, practical to test blood every day. So we recommend you to test the blood as, uh, as much as you can. And to be practical, we are saying uh, no, not more than four times a year and not less than once a year. So you need to test between once a year to four times a year the blood. And then between the mountains of the blood, you have a lot of hills of uh, data from the fitness tracker. And the, this data coming every day, basically, the resting heart rate, the deep sleep, the REM sleep, the HRV, and all of that coming every day and giving you a, 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 some a information that coming very frequent the quality of the data is less than the quality of the blood, but still because the frequency is much higher, you can extract a lot of data from that because then you can literally do an N of one experiment, meaning you can look at uh, your history of let's say last 100 days or last year and come and say, uh, Richard, we have seen some uh, 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 statistical significant change in your resting heart rate between this month and last month. So something is going either going in the good direction or the bad direction and give you some recommendation what to do about that. So, so that's how we see it. It's again, it's once in a lifetime between every quarter to once a year and every day for the uh, fitness tracker. So the fitness trackers, do, do people have to type it in or, or is there some kind of automatic feed? No, no, we have an integration. So it's an yeah. end-to-end -end integration. You basically come to our uh, app and you select, okay, I want to connect my fit, fit, uh, Fitbit, my uh, Garmin, or my Apple Watch. And then the data is transferred to us, and then we are analyzing it. So you don't need to do anything. It's completely seamless and automated. Okay. And the, an and the analysis is kind of like done in real time. And so as soon as the data is in there, it'll update my spreadsheet or whatever, my dashboard, I guess. Your, your, your app, yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, what, what is uh, uh, nice about the data from the fitness tracker, as I said, it's uh, seamless. So basically, mm -hmm. you don't need to do anything. 
It's mm. like it's we follow you without you need to move your finger. And that's allow us to know when you exercise, what kind of exercise you've done. Uh, for example, if we recommended you to exercise more because your uh, lipids are high, we can know that and then we can automatically check you in and say, it's not only that we told you, recommended you, Richard, to uh, exercise. We have seen that you exercise. So you can receive some uh, uh, benefit of that, but also we can notify you, say, hey, good, good job, you exercise today. We ask you to exercise and you exercise today. We also can find uh, some uh, physiological markers such as resting heart rate and uh, a deep sleep and REM sleep and total sleep. And uh, based on that, giving you a tip and come say, Richard, we noticed that your REM sleep was very bad last night, uh, but don't worry. Uh, if you will do X, Y, and Z uh, at 8 p.m. tonight, your sleep most likely will be better. So don't forget to do mm-hmm. that. So, so uh, it's allow us to give you a lot of uh, what I call, again, hills between the mountains of the blood data. Are you looking at, uh, well, I guess, it, like continuous uh, readings, like maybe a continuous glucose monitor or anything like that? Yeah, we, we do. We are uh, analyze right na- analyzing right now the, the vendors and the value and what can we do mm-hmm. with that. Uh, I think that right now, uh, the continuous glucose monitor was built mainly for diabetic. And we are currently serving only healthy people. And there is not enough data to say what is the right range for continuous glucose monitoring for a healthy person. And what does it mean if you are uh, too high or too low at specific time of the day? So we are doing some research with, uh, with our science team to understand that. And when we'll have enough data, then we'll start offering it. Because uh, our um, a, a way to, uh, to approach the consumer is we are only approaching them with a, a service or with a input when we really believe that there is a science and merit for that. And currently the continuous glucose monitoring for healthy people is more like entertainment. It's interesting, it's cool, but there is no uh, peer-reviewed scientific data that say that uh, if you have a, a, your peak for healthy person is higher or lower for a specific level, that means that it's good or bad. There is some assumption because for diabetic, it's, it's like that, but we don't know it for sure for uh, healthy people. So we are uh, researching it right now. And uh, uh, in the near future, when we'll have enough data, we'll start to integrate it into our platform. One thing is, I, I did see that. Um, so you make recommendations, you make recommendations about the diet, right? But also, um, like Dr. Aaron Siegel is one of your advisors, I believe, he, and he wrote the personalized diet. So, and I read that and he said, like, different, the same food can have very different effects on the glucose levels, and I guess other markers for yeah. different people. So how do you, how do you make a food recommendation? Or, or do you make the recommendation and see what happens? So just interested in that. So you're asking how are we doing it right now in the yeah. trial? Well, yes, I, I guess I'm, ask, I'm asking because different food will have, the same food will have different effect on different people. How would you, based on a particular marker, how would you make a recommendation for a particular diet? Yeah, so, so we are making the recommendation based on data of a peer-reviewed scientific publication mm-hmm. that, uh, for example, show that uh, eating a specific nut is uh, making a better effect for a specific blood biomarkers, uh, or eating a specific fruit will make a, a specific uh, a improvement of a, a, specific, a different blood biomarker. And that's how we, we do that. The data that uh, Aran Segal uh, showed is uh, very interesting. Um, what is uh, uh, you and your audience need to understand, uh, Iran and his colleagues looked uh, specifically on glucose. And it's basically, I will give the analogies like a horse with a blinder. So you look only on glucose, that's great. But what does it mean for cholesterol? What does it mean for testosterone? What does it mean for other markers? If you look at the company that uh, he founded, which called Day2, they went now specifically to work with diabetic population because it makes sense. Their, their issue is a, a fasting gluc- or a level of glucose. What we are doing, we are looking in a holistic way. So in a holistic way, it's important. The glucose is one of the most important blood biomarkers, but it's not the only one. So what we are saying, we are, we are looking holistically, not specifically for a specific blood biomarker. Hopefully it's clear. Mm, yes. No, no, that... 
that that's that's good. So. Uh,